What's up guys, JDog back here again, and we're back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to be going over how to make a universal server. Now, what's a universal server you might ask? So, my answer to this is a server which will allow Java, Bedrock, and any version, whether it's a previous version up to 1.8, or all the way up until currently what the latest version is, 1.19. Um, one of the great things about this as well is the fact that you know that little changeover when Bedrock usually updates, Java doesn't, or the other way around. It will also counteract this, um, so you won't have to update the servers. You just have to keep updating the plugins. Um, every time there is an update, just update the plugins, and you're going to be able to keep letting anybody on your server at any time. First things first, if you haven't got yourself a server, go to seacoast.go, grab yourself a server, and we're going to be using a Java server for this. I'm going to be running this for currently what is paper 1.19. Of course, whenever you watch the video, if there is another update, just make sure that you have uh, this up to date and you have all the plugins up to date as well. So let's go ahead first and we're going to stop the server before we do anything. And then we're going to head over to actually install the thing. So another or well, further explanation is we're going to use guys and floodgate to allow the bedrock without any Java account. So anybody can log on with bedrock. Of course, if you are using Xbox or PlayStation, um, you don't have servers straight away. There is other ways of doing it through mobile apps. I can't remember exactly the name. It's something like MCC connector or MC connector, stuff like that. You can use DNS change settings. Um, however, that can also be a bit of a security risk so I tend not to use the DNS ones and I try to use uh, I try to use it with an app or something like that of course just grab yourself a PC or a mobile where you can connect to server straight away on bedrock so the first thing that we're going to need is geyser then we're going to need another plugin um, called via backwards this is to allow people up until uh, or from 1.8 up until the version that you're using um, and then via version which is going to allow people in front of you so anybody you know if you're using 1.18 um, server people on 1.19 can still join covering all the bases so with that on the geyser and of course you will be able to find the links down in the description you're going to go to download um, to download the actual geyser file now when you come to this page you're going to look for geyser um, geyser spigot click that it's going to download on the top right from here go to geyser mc and we're going to find one called floodgate and from floodgate we're going to get the master version so the master just here click the master and then go to floodgate spigot uh, what floodgate does is it stops you having to log in with the java account as well it means you can just seamlessly log in with bedrock no matter what accounts you have um, no login or password details you just simply log in so we've got them two done now uh, next up we're going to go to via backwards download by clicking the link up there uh, of course this will be the most up to date and they do keep these up to date as well as you can see 1.19 if we go to via version same thing is going to be 1.19 and we're going to download that as well so we've got all four plugins now what we're going to have to do is quite simply upload them we just change a little bit of configuration and then we're done that is how quick and easy it now is Normally I would suggest going to files then FTP file access, however some of the files are going to be a bit too large and they will not go through. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use FileZilla. FileZilla is a free download, um, I'll try and add the download link in the description as well, if I do remember, hopefully I will. Uh, if not, just search it on my YouTube and you'll be able to find it there as well. I've got a video explaining how to connect. Um, you use your host, your username, password and port on the top and that's going to be given from your Multicraft FTP uh, file access. Your password is going to be your Multicraft password. So once you're logged in, click quick connect, you can then click the arrow and then reconnect to it any the time once you're connected you're going to see your server files on the right hand side here as you can see and we have plugins if i double click on plugins we're then going to upload the files there what i do recommend for this is going to your downloads folder highlighting all of these uh, copy or cutting them i usually cut them so you don't end up having multiple uh, different versions because these sort of become obsolete once you update again anyway and um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut them and put them in an independent folder which is easy uh, to find um, in FileZilla it's alphabetical so if it's in a long list of files it's going to take you ages to find. So I've got a folder here that's empty, I'm simply going to paste into there, paste that over. Once that's pasted I can now come back to FileZilla and then find it up here on the top left. So I'm going to go to desktop, then the folder that I had them in, you can see that's where the plugins are. So highlight all four of them and then drag them over to the right hand side which is going to be your server. This should only take a few minutes, um, as I said one or two of the plugins are quite large and this is why I won't go through your FTP file access, it might time out all depends on um, what the limits are for it there we go and with that little message we are all done so let's close out this go back to our multicraft over here uh, and first of all what we're going to do is we're going to start our server uh, to sort of kick everything in all the files and folders are now going to be created that we need and then we can just change the config on the geyser and that's it we're all done ready to play so now that we've started one of the things that we have done is we have already enabled the fact that anybody that can come on with a uh, lower version and a higher version so that's already done no config needed for that at all so um following that we're going to just stop the server one more time and now we're going to go we're going to configure the geyser 
so just one more step and what I do suggest here again is just duplicating this tab or writing your port and IP those are the only two bits of information that we're going to need at the moment um, so I'm just going to duplicate my tab here and on the other tab, um, now we can see the server stopped, we are going to go to config files and we're going to look for the geyser YML. As we can see here, we've got geyser spigot uh, .yml, so let's just click on that folder. Uh, the few things, and there is only a few things that we have to change here, is ports and IPs so it matches. So first thing I'm going to get is I'm just going to grab my port number uh, and I'll try and go slowly through this because I know it's a lot of writing, but so we're right at the top here, we just come down the tiniest bit and under bedrock you have port. Uh, highlight over that, we're going to paste over that and just make sure that there's one space between the colon there and the number. Uh, so we've done that down here, this is optional, but you can also change the message of the day. Uh, we've got message of the day one, message of the day two, and how will it also uh, appear for bedrock clients. So you can change this to suit you, change your message of the day and that little you know thing that pops up before they log on to your server. From that, we're going to go just a little bit further down until you see the word auto. Another great way to find things on here is by actually clicking on the document. Uh, you can press control and F and and as you can see on the top right, I had a little word finder here. Um, if I type auto, it's going to find everywhere that it says auto. I'm just going to take that out so the highlighted words are going to come off. Again, that was control F whilst clicked or selected on the document that you want to find that on. And that works on almost everything, so just a good general tip. Uh, next up, so we do we go to the auto, that's under the IP addresses for the remote Java uh, version or server. I'm going to come and grab our IP address. From our server, wherever you're hosting it from, grab your IP and we're just going to come into Highlight Auto, Control V and we're going to paste that in there again, making sure there is just one space between the colon and then the actual IP number. Uh, almost finally where we have port just under that, again I'm just going to grab the port number, should have really remembered from the first time, um, but yeah, that went quickly. And we're just going to replace the port number again. So the top port number and the second port number, which is a bit further down, are both matching the one from your server. Again, sorry to keep repeating myself, make sure there's a little, um, a little space between the colon and the number right there. Lastly, and the last step that we have to do here is simply just change where it says auth type from online to floodgate. Now we have it there, set, set to floodgate, exactly spelt like that, just like the plugin that we just downloaded, it means they don't need to log in, uh, they're going to be authorised through this plugin and they'll be able to log it straight into your server. Now that is simply it, we just save the document here, make sure of course you have stopped your server before this, uh, most likely will work anyway but sometimes servers just won't recognise it depending on when if you haven't stopped it, if it's still running um, and you change some of the config. So make sure this stopped before, change the config and now all we've got to do is just start this back up and that's it, we're done. It, it was that quick and you can now log on with any clients whether the players are 1.8 1.19 or further and of course to make sure that these are up to date what you do need to do is just keep updating the plugin jars so you don't need to delete everything if I go to show you now um, as we see there started straight away it was as quick as that and I can now log on if I go to the console you're going to see also um, that everything started here the only thing that if you might see um, something like an error about the port it's because you haven't put, the, put, put your port from the server in the right place just make sure that both the port numbers on the config or the config.yml are replaced with the port from the server that you're hosting or the uh, port that you're using if you're self-hosting and um, so everything looks okay on there if I do have uh, plugins let's just make sure that they're all running we got all four running and as you can see we got all four running everything's working nice and you now have yourself a universal server now if you do want to join one to play I'm currently building one as well um, I'll have it popping up on screen it is havocraft.mc the IP and I'm not quite sure what the actual port is right now so if you are playing bedrock I'll have that up on the screen so you can join with the IP and port as well um, again using this I've got some cool player shops as well on there and I'm trying to build this little town which looks awesome so if you do want to join um, yeah come and try it out it's not fully made yet it's in the progress so uh, thanks for watching make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you next time bye bye